Two hours of primetime bowling begins now from AMF Country Club Lanes in Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome to the Lumber Liquidators Championship. Seven rollers chasing number one seed, Patrick Allen. Yeah, yeah. Dick Jones. Fantasm. Yeah. Baltimore, Rist the City, and welcome to the telecast. What with Danny Price with the champion of Sean Rash. They want his title. Look a whole year past. You see your moment. You can't let your chance pass. Crabs on edge, getting antsy in the chairs. Screaming out your name with they signs in the air. Stay claim to your lane. This is now your pair. You know why you're here, and it becomes so clear. Believe in yourself like nobody does. Let's see what it is, but we don't know what it is. To the eighth event of this season's Denny's PBA Tour. 71 titles and 10 majors have been won between tonight's eight competitors. And that's right, I said eight competitors. Our tournament format is full of bowlers. The number eight, seven, six, and five seeds will do battle versus one another. The winner will advance to take on the four seed, 24 year old Rhino Page. And alongside 13-time titleist Randy Peterson, I'm Rob Stone. Happy holidays to you. And today's format, a lot like what you're probably experiencing around the local malls right now. A lot of traffic. We begin with that four-bowler cluster, and that's going to affect the lanes all day. It really is. With all of that extra traffic, the oil pattern's going to break down much faster. Guys are going to have to make their best adjustments to get past that first match. And we begin that first match with a four-bowler pod, and sitting in that pod, and sitting really on top of the entire bowling world right now, Walter Ray Williams Jr. looking for a second straight title. He just proves week in and week out. It doesn't matter the, the uh, format. It doesn't matter the oil pattern. At 48 years of age, he's having the best start of his career ever. Just proves it week in and week out. He's the greatest to ever play this game. And yeah, he told us yesterday his goal right now really is trying to win that player of the year honor. He is in the driver's seat for that right now. But in the driver's seat today, number one seed, the lefty Patrick Allen. He's going to have a long time to sit, think, wait, and evaluate how these lanes are breaking down. I agree, but I think he's in the best spot imaginable for this format. All of the players were adamant. They all agreed that the straighter you can play this pattern, the better your carry percentage was when you hit the pocket. Patrick Allen, one of two southpaws. Well, he doesn't have all that traffic on his side. I think he can go straight enough, long enough to knock all 10 down when he gets there. I suck in the sense to be Walter Ray! When we return, we put our scorekeeper to work. Four bowlers unleashed at the same time. In about half an hour, one of them will have survived. The Lumber Liquidators Championship is brought to you by Lumber Liquidators. Hardwood flooring for less. By Denny's. Denny's always works by Motel 6, official lodging partner of the PBA, and by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com. And we welcome you back to the AMF Country Club Lanes in Baltimore, Maryland for the Lumber Liquidators Championship. We begin with our four bowler shootout. High score advances to take on the four seed. You have our number five seed, Walter Ray Williams Jr., looking for his 45th title. Chris Warren, a wonderful story that we'll develop further in our broadcast. Mike Devaney, they nickname him Monkey Boy. We'll tell you why in a moment. And the eight seed, Chris Barnes, last time we saw him on television, he bowled one of the more mystifying games we have ever seen in well, bowling. It was a mystifying match, him and... Uh, Brad Angela, 150 to 160. Begin with Mike Devaney. Rather, Chris Warren, the sixth seed, opens this up with the strike. 
Welcome back to Bowling on Television, Chris Warren. It's been a long, long time. In fact, his last show, 1995. Welcome back, kid. Starts it with a strike and sits down for a while. Gives way now to the number five seed, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Anything you can do, I can do better. Very interesting. Tell you how great Walter Ray is. He started out in practice playing way outside. Well, that first shot there, he took four steps, moved up on the approach. He's trying to slow hook it. Now up, Mike Devaney. Ninth year on the tour for the 34-year-old. And our strike streak ends as Devaney leaves the 10. Ring and 10, and that's going to be the theme today. The player who can get out the corner pin it's going to bode very well because that was the bugaboo this week, is trying to get the corner pins out, both on the left and right side of the lounge. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Remember the last time we saw Mike Devaney on television? Just a few weeks ago, the Etonic Championship, same oil pattern. He also then missed a single pin spare. And with this four-person shootout type format to open up, one mistake and you can pretty much write yourself off. He's got an early hole, Chris Barnes, to start it off. There we go. Oh, he blew those up. Chris Barnes came in a couple hours early this oh. evening to work out some kinks in his physical game. He was here way before all the other players practicing and working on his game. Walter Ray started with the strike. Looking to open up with a double. That's just an awful break leaving the 479. Walter, four and a half steps, just a, a half a step to get himself started to try to stay slow enough to get his ball to hook. He was telling us yesterday, worst carry all season this week outside of his trip to Chicago. Yet he still placed fifth. But in the second frame, he is unable to get a mark. I think this is one of the greatest stories of the years, Chris Warren back on television after the hard times that he fell into some years back. A lot of thanks goes out to Ken Baker, who I know personally as well. Ken Baker really took Chris Warren under his wing and took care of him. Oh, great start for Warren from the fall of 97 to essentially the fall of 2001. He was telling us we did not touch a bowling ball dealing with some personal demons, drugs and alcohol stealing him away from his family and from the bowling centers, fought back in 2000 and started getting a little more positive, and here he is on TV for the first time in over a decade. Chris Barnes, one strike, two strikes. Uh, using two different bowling balls, and right now, Rob, early on, Chris Barnes is carrying the building. He's going to bowl a lot higher than that 150 game the last time we saw him on television. See that grip right there of Mike Devaney? It's called the Sarge Easter grip. Fingertip, middle finger, conventional ring finger. He may be staring at back-to-back -back open frames. Uh, no, you can pretty much count on it because the 4-6 split is not something you make every day. Your strategy? at the 4-6. You got to throw it really hard at either the 4 or the 6 and just try to tip it over to the other pin. But Try to cut it and slice it to the left. No luck. And not the start Mike Devaney wanted. He's at 18. Chris Warren and Barnes tied right now. Both back-to-back -back strikes. Get it! Just missed knocking out that 10. Nickname Squeak, or Squeaks, because of his high-pitched voice. I've known Chris for a long, long time, and he still displays a lot of power, even at age 44. He gets the ball into the swing real quick. Gets those feet moving. 
And he's actually using a conventional grip this week. We'll talk more about that later. Knocks that one down. Warren got back into the bowling swing of things in 2002 when he started doing the Northwest Regional Tour. Originally, it was kind of in a Bull Durham type capacity to Justin Clement. The first event he went to, he actually ended up going solo to and won it. This will be his first top 10 finish of the season. Top 10, nothing new to Walter Ray. Walter Ray told us, you know, it's all about simple mathematics today. <laughs> According to my numbers, I have a 1 in 64 chance to win this one. Everybody in this four-person pod, if you will, not overly optimistic that they're going to be walking away with a big check today. Walter Ray picks up the spare. So he starts strike, open frame, spare. Mike Devaney right now looking for his first mark of the game. Nine and nine. Frame one, frame two, frame three. That's much better. Much better. There's right now just north of San Diego and Temecula, California. Terrific player on our tour. Mike, uh, a year ago, was ranked 11th. The year before that, 7th. Very consistent out here. Chris Barnes, 0 for 3 on television this season. That's, that has the potential to change. Wonderful start for Chris Barnes. And the smile is back on his face. Three frames down in our four-man shootout. Barnes on top by 11. Frames four through six when we return to Baltimore. Welcome back as our coverage continues here with the Lumber Liquidators Championship from Baltimore, Maryland. Last time we saw Chris Barnes on television, he bowled a 151. That will not happen right now. He's on top. And Chris Warren, wonderful story. We touched on it earlier. He is the focus of this week's Atonic Edge, Randy. 99.9% .9 of the professionals out here use a fingertip grip or some form of that. Check out Chris Warren. That's a conventional grip. It's when it goes to the second knuckle, and Chris Warren has used that all week long. Gets the ball in the swing quick, gets those feet moving, and then snaps the wrist at the bottom of the swing. But I got to tell you, I can't remember the last time a guy made a show out here throwing a conventional grip. Conventional grip is what you get beginners in. Walter Ray Williams Jr. down by 22 in the fourth frame. Attack that strike onto the spare. Crowd certainly here to cheer on Deadeye. Now Warren now lives in Grants Pass, Oregon, has a three-year-old son, Christopher II. Remarried and completely has his life back in order, working at a working at a pro shop that he now owns in Oregon. And there was his grip, and there's his whip, and there's his tent. And there's a real good example of how to basically control your timing and how fast your feet go. The faster you get the ball into the swing, or the earlier you get the ball into the swing, the faster the feet go. Watch how slow and deliberate Chris Barnes' footwork is. Much later, much slower into the swing, a la slower feet. Barnes opened up with the turkey looking for a four-bagger. There we go. And oh. finding it. And he gets a ham bone. I love it. <laughs> Our first ham bone sign of the year. <laughs> Watch the head pin now. It's going to go to the sidewall, and it's going to hunt. That dog's going to hunt. We call it the bird dog. Snaps the 10 out. Chris Barnes, four bagger. Oh, yeah. Mike Devaney. Difficult start. Strike. Strike. Pulling himself back into this one. And you got to love his nickname, Two Monkey match. Boy. Two games. Right, he's had that for a while. He, he won his third PBA tournament he ever bowled. And his quote was, oh, boy, it's really nice to get that monkey off my back, not realizing that it usually takes more than three events to win your first title. So everybody caught on to it and said, all right there, monkey boy. Yeah, Jeff Hickenbottom gave him that, a former touring player out of California. 
Warren working on a strike. That's right. Give him another. A wonderful story for Chris Warren. This is his first top 10 finish of the season. Hasn't won a title in 193 events. Second longest drought among exempt bowlers. Walter Ray Williams Jr. hasn't won a title in seven days. Good gracious, somebody give him one, please. <laughs> 10 again, oh, Stan. Are you kidding me? Ridiculous. Well, in practice, I was watching Walter Ray leave nothing but ringing 10s from the outside corner on this right lane, and now it's nothing but weak 10s. Second time he's left the 10 standing. And Rob, the difference is just entry angle and power into the pins. Walter Ray knows that he's not a big high ref power guy. He relies on accuracy and angle. The further right he can stay, the better his pin carry is. Here's Monkey Boy, Mike Devaney. <laughs> you had to call him Monkey Boy, huh? <laughs> Monkey Boy, throw that kid a banana. Drops him off. Winless in his last four TV matches. It's been 94 events since his first and only title. Came at the 2003 Geico Earl Anthony Classic in Tacoma. Chris Barnes, your leader, working off the ham bone, looking for five in a row. <laughs> Give him five! We had dinner with Barnesy last night, and, and he was... He wasn't down, but he, he had no expectations for today at all. He said, man, I, I've never had a lower stress level going into a TV event than I have right now. Well, if he gets through this first match, let's see if that will continue as the night goes on. Walter Ray working a spare. Getting a strike. Well, this is rapid fire bowling. There's your leader, Chris Barnes. Has opened up with five straight strikes. He's in pursuit of a Motel 6 sixth frame. I'll tell you about that in a second. Barnes on top by 21. Here's Chris Warren. Watch how fast these feet get going and how early he gets the ball back into the top of the backswing. In pursuit of a triple bagger. Three in a row now for Warren. A lot of things have tried to knock him down through the years. What a great personality. So warm, inviting, upbeat yesterday in our conversation with him. Well, if you ever met his mother, Mary, she's 83 years of age now. We went on a trip together to Japan when all the guys are going to Japan Cup. She is the, the most wonderful person you'll ever meet. Motel 6, sixth frame for Barnes. Oh. Had he knocked all 10 down, he would have earned $600 for Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. And Rob? It's all about the Benjamins, and one nasty ringing 10 will cost him six of those. We'll have to win five matches today to take the title. He's off to a well, great start here, though. He beat my last game on TV. Yeah. Yeah, he beat his last game by, in the sixth frame. He had a 151 last time we saw him versus Brad Angelo. He, he was bowling like, I don't know, like me after a few too many pitchers. I mean, it was, it, things were standing that shouldn't be standing. Boy. Tough, tough pattern. They broke down and got real ugly. Devaney starting to pick up his groove now. Right now, Mike Devaney's looking at, well, you know what? I got started really, really poorly, but if I strike out, I can still shoot 258. Devaney with the ham bone gets himself back into it, but Barnes, your leader, by a 10 spot. Winner can turn the conclusion of our four bowlers shootout. Chris Barnes in the lead. Welcome back to Baltimore for the conclusion of our opening four bowlers shootout. Chris Barnes with a 10 pin lead standing up now is that man, Chris Warren. 44-year-old, working on a turkey, looking for a ham bone. Remember, his, here's a guy that's won five times out here, but his last title, 1992. Got it. 
it there. He Bingo. liked it. And with good reason. A lot of power for five foot five, 110 pounds, wouldn't you say? Nice move. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of room in his bowling shirt. Doesn't exactly fill it out, but he's got the placement. Walter Ray. Eyeball in that one. Walter Ray is just having some kind of fun this year. And that's what happens when you win a lot. Leading candidate for player of the year right now. He's uh, leading that point list. Five out of eight telecasts. Best start of his career at age 48. Devaney after a horrible start. Get down! Yeah! <laughs> Daddy Light, shake it, but don't break it! All right, we're looking for some pin carry. We're looking for some love. He gets it there, and then he gives it back. <laughs> oh, no. He is never, ever going to live down that reaction. That has just been stored in the PBA vault. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> now, Barnes has to fight through that react. Devaney is still laughing over there, trying to contain himself. And here's Barnes bowling a wonderful game. Working on a spare. Uh-oh. No dancing from Barnes. No <laughs> it, it, you can't top the master. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it just wouldn't look the same, Chris. Oh, watch this. What a, another just quality shot by Barnesy. Barnes with the six-pack, Devaney with the keg. Well, I wouldn't say six-pack. Being generous. It's the holidays. Walter Ray. <laughs> Nothing there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's, I just love seeing a guy enjoying his sport, his craft, at that age and excelling. I mean, he's really kind of the Brett Favre of bowling this season. You know, people had writ written off Favre, hang it up, it's done. No one, I don't think anybody wrote off Walter Ray, but I don't think anybody anticipated the amount of success he's having either. Especially himself. You know, when you're having a lot of success out here, obviously it's a lot of fun, especially when you're used to playing this game at a very high level. Chris Warren will take the lead with a strike right here. Warren was at that level for a, quite a few years out here looking to get back to that same place. Bingo. Oh. Oh. He thought he had it. Got the messenger, unfortunately, went right in front of the 10. And right now he knows he's in trouble because Chris Barnes is on a 279 clip. Watch this. Here it comes, the bird dog right in front. The spare here, the best Chris Warren can shoot, 258. Mike Devaney can strike out and shoot 258. Walter Ray Williams Jr., well, well, we'll have to wait and see him next week. But Chris Barnes right now in the driver's seat. Warren takes care of that one. Warren, a recovering alcoholic told us yesterday, you know, when I used to drink it, it was easy to sleep the night before the TV finals. Last Friday, when he found out he was making TV, he said I was up every 30 minutes, you know, wrestling with the anxiety, uh, exciting but terrifying at the same time. And, and that's why people are given second chances, and he is capitalizing. Chris Barnes. Do a little dance! Said it earlier, using two different bowling balls. A little stronger bowling ball in the right lane, a little weaker ball in the left lane. He decided to go with this. That was the adjustment he made out of practice, and it's paying off. Devaney, first two frames, both open. Since then, five consecutive strikes. Making a six pack for the kegger. He's got a lot of game, that kid. And a lot of people don't know it, but he is one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet. And he said, hey, Randy, it's hard to be funny on television. Says who? 
Well, I mean, you know, he's got a lot of things going on. He's trying to strike. He's trying to keep from shooting 150. And, you know, there are uh, some other things that he's focusing on other than being funny. Off the lanes, he's hysterical. Warren trailing by 11. Keeps the pressure on Barnes as the 44-year-old Chris Warren. And we have a great chance right now for a three-way tie because Chris Barnes is one nine, nine spare away from also shooting 258. Walter Ray off the spare. Drop and give me 10. <laughs> I like that. It's good. You know, when I used to work out, I could drop and give you 10. Right now, it'd be about three. Which is as many chocolate chip cookies as you stole from the food spread that you have sitting in your pocket for your flight home, by the way. Buddy, I was going to gift those out. Thanks a lot. Great stocking stuff. Oh! Devaney, another one. He's still in it. He knows that it's all right here in this guy, Chris Barnes. Chris Barnes has two frames, ninth and tenth. If he goes nine spare here, 258. If he strikes in the ninth and goes nine spare on his first ball in the tenth and then strikes on the fill, 258. Devaney, Chris Warren still have life. Seven of his eight frames have been strikes. Chris Barnes looking for tour title number nine. Mm. Ah. There it is. Now, an opportunity for a three-way tie. Devaney knows it. Chris Warren knows it. But they will have to perform in the 10th frame, just like Chris Barnes. What are the odds of all three guys striking out in the 10th? Takes care of his second spare. That's going to be a great conclusion here in this four-man shootout. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. is pretty much done. It's not often we say that about Walter Ray, down 51. The quarterback is toast, but there's always next week, and who knows? Hey, I hit the pocket every ball. That's pretty good. Yeah, he did hit the pocket every ball. He's going to shoot 190. Now you know how I feel, Walter Ray. Walter Ray is the best average this season, 233.21. This was his fifth championship round appearance of the season, equaling his total from last season. Last ball from Walter Ray. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> Well, he can head back to his motorhome with his wife Paige and his beautiful three-month-old daughter Rebecca Lynn and continue that great season he has. And we'll see him next week, we hope, in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Here's Chris Warren. Can max out at 258. Ditto Barnes, ditto Devaney. What an awesome start we've had today. Chris Warren hasn't been in this spot in a long, long time. He told us yesterday he was, he was tired. My hand's tired, my body's tired. A lot of bowling for this elder statesman out here today, 44 years old. Dick, dick. Liked it. Dick. How about this performance from a guy who hasn't been on television in 12 years? This is why you become a professional bowler. This is what we live for. This moment, right now, check out that pin action. That's why you put revolutions and spin on a bowling ball. Feeling this pressure is what makes sports fun. Has the chance to take his first lead of the day. Give him the lead! Brilliant shot, one more strike just like that, and he cannot lose. He can only tie. Watch the six, second to the right, six pin. It's gonna slap the 10, silly, watch that. Bang, take that. Looking to wrap this up with four consecutive strikes. And he would finish no worse than in a tie. Dang, turn over. Come on. Oh, Dang it. 
are you kidding me? Well, he yelled dig and it dug in too hard and the ball hooked just a little bit too much. The back part of the lane and went right by the nine pin. Watch this, right at you. Oh my. Ends with a 257. Chris Barnes now three in the 10th will win, or excuse me, beat Chris Warren by one pin. Mike Devaney can still strike out for 258. Chris Barnes, two strikes and nine. He'll tie Chris Warren. And this place is about as silent as it can get. There's one. Plan with a purpose. Chris Barnes needs to just stay out of his own way mentally, just keep making the same shots he's been making and hope that the pin carry here. gods are good to him as he takes a re-rack on the left lane. Buy himself some time mentally. Don't overthink it. Just get up and execute. Looking for his first televised win this season. 0-3 this season, 1-5 in his last five TV appearances. You see Devaney watching on the right. Check in the front. Last shot went light. This one goes high. Looks like it's just a little bit left the target. You see that little snap of the back end there. And no trip four. So now it's up to Mike Devaney. Three in the tenth. He moves on. Two strikes and nine. He ties Chris Warren. Anything less, Chris Warren will move on and face Rhino Page. 248 for Barnes. Here's Devaney. Again, started with consecutive open frames and then has been nothing but strike since. Hold it. Eighth in a row for the seven seed, Devaney. And after just an ugly start where he whiffs the 10 pin and then comes back with a 4 6 split, he's got two, four, six, eight in a row. Max out at 258, which would be one more than Chris Warren, that man right there, the sixth seed. Nothing Warren can do but sit back and watch Devaney. Oh, yeah! The six pin just catch, catches enough of the 10 that time. And Chris Warren knows the score. One more of those, and he's out. Devaney moves on. <laughs> Strike will do it for Devaney. A nine would be a tie with Warren, and they would go to a roll off. That's money. Yeah! Got him! Drop yeah! him! Devaney moves on! How about that 10 bagger? We've had our share of drama already. Waiting in the wings now, 24-year-old up-and-comer Rhino Page makes his TV debut against that man. And we roll on from the Lumber Liquidators Championship from the AMF Country Club Lanes in Baltimore. It's now a four-match show as the seventh seed, Mike Devaney, has moved on to take on number four seed, the 24-year-old lefty, Rhino Page. Look at Devaney. As we take a look at our CLR clean sweep, and it's all Devaney. His last shot in the tent. That's money. Needs it, gets it, and moves on. 
Well, we started in dramatic fashion. We were staring at the possibility of a three-way tie. But Devaney was able to muscle his way through and move on. Oh. Essentially, that is now 11 strikes in a row for Devaney over the course of two games. And he started off the four-man shootout with two open frames and then went 10 straight strikes. Now Rhino Page making his TV debut, looking to become the 77th bowler in tour history to win a title in their first appearance on television. The first of two lefties on the show leaves two standing on his first toss. I thought it was interesting to watch in practice. Patrick Allen, who is kind of a mentor to, to uh, Rhino Page, was ever watching him practice as you take a look at his form. Obviously, this kid's got loads of talent. But Patrick was over trying to help him get lined up, trying to calm his nerves a bit. Two. First pair of that. His ball reaction didn't look that good. Patrick kept sanding other uh, bowling balls, putting surface on other bowling balls to try to get him a better look. It didn't look all that great. And I'll tell you what, a minute before you're about to bowl your first ever game on television and you have a bad ball reaction, that's a really scary place to be. Patrick Allen, our number one seed, he's the other lefty that's left. Page, open with the spare. There you go. Yeah. Like that one. Come on. Now, we throw around the term up-and-comer a lot. This kid, though, fits the bill. He's got a load of talent. And this week broke a record during the TQR, the tournament qualifying round. He broke the seven-game record. He averaged 269, a record previously held by Jason Couch. Kid can throw a lot of strikes. In those seven games, he dropped 1,883 pins. Ooh. All ten dropped there for Devaney as we take a look at our Motel 6 matchup, the number four versus the number seven seed, righty versus lefty. Page taking on Devaney as you look at their numbers through the week. Both players have bowled 300. Mike Devaney, what he's just done is thrown 12 in a row over two games. That's actually referred to as an Andy Verapapa 300 game. Did you know that, Rob? I, there's no way I knew that. Stay out there. You know, the players all talked about the more angle you create, the worse the carry gets here. Mike Devaney's creating a little bit of angle, and he's got 13 in a row. A Baker's dozen of consecutive strikes for Devaney. Nine 300 games were rolled this week. 41 have been tossed this season. So if you break down that average, nine, a very high amount of 300 games this week. Page, spare. Strike. Yeah. Strike. There we go. Yeah, I think there's three there. rookies to watch out here that are bowling the TQR. They're not even exempt players. One of them is David O'Sullivan, Team USA guy, PJ Haggerty, Team USA guy, and this kid right here, Rhino Page. And he's proving that he can really get it done via the tour qualifying round. We used to call it the PTQs back in the day, the, the or the rabbit squads, and I can tell you they were no fun to bowl way back in the day, and it's no bargain today either. There you go. Come on. Mm. Thought he had a turkey. I just think that this year the talent pool is much stronger than it has been in some years for the guys that are bowling the pre-tournament qualifiers. A lot of really, really good players out there. And they're all trying to do one thing, and that's Rhino Page's main goal, and that's to earn an exemption, full exempt status out here on the Denny's PBA Tour. Smacks that one down. He was telling us yesterday just how surprised he was at the relaxation he was feeling going into his first TV event. You know, something he said he's dreamed about the last few years. He's been in the stands quite a bit. He's been under the lights before, bowling in college for the University of Kansas. Knows he can compete with these guys. Devaney looking for 14 in a row. Mm, 
Bruno. Now he's looking to make his first spare of the day. Has not had a spare. And remember, tape, tape, tape. Game one, he missed a 10 pin to start that match. This one's just a little later, a little behind the head pin. And a lot of times you're going to leave that corner pin when the ball just gets a little bit too far down the lane. Mike Devaney going with a piece of tape for a spare ball. He says, you know what? I better not miss another 10 pin. Let me tape up. <laughs> there you go. He's been doing a lot of dancing today. We saw the uh, jelly roll belly rub in his first match. I don't know what that was, a little jig. Uh, was that the river dance? Huh? No, couldn't have been. Shades of Chris Farley dancing with Patrick <laughs> Swayze on Saturday Night Live. Yeah! Get back on that strike boat, my friend. I'm not even going to follow you down that road, just Excellent. so you know. Excellent decision. The Chris Farley dancing with Patrick Swayze. I'm not even following you there. Here's Rhino Page. Won two golds at this summer's Pan Am Games held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Telling us about the experience. We'll tell you about it after this toss. Leads the 70 set of those Pan Am Games. The first time he really felt like an Olympic athlete. He stayed in the athlete village. As bowlers, you don't get to feel like athletes very often. Got to go down to the beach and watch the men's volleyball team take on Brazil. A, a wonderful experience and a, a bit of a different bowling growth curve now for players these days compared to maybe, maybe your days coming up through the ranks, Randy. Completely different nowadays. A lot of bowling scholarships offered by universities out there. Not so back in my era. When I first started on tour back in 1981, but I think the biggest thing is the experience that these players gain bowling collegiately. They travel the world, they bowl on some pretty tough and brutal conditions, and they're well seasoned. Has bowled for Junior Team USA, Team USA, college, and now here in the PBA. This is just his seventh career PBA event as a member. He joined in October of this year. He's making a pretty strong showing here in his TV debut. Don't mess with Rhino. Page in just his seventh career PBA event. Hopes to continue his recent hot streak, the conclusion of his match when we return. Welcome back to Baltimore, Devaney Page. Continues to roll on in their battle. And we take a look at this week's Lumber Liquidators Know Your Wood. And we examine the Scorpion oil pattern, Randy. Well, again, these players like to stay right or straight as, as long as possible. The righty's out here, the lefty's here, because they all said that that helps increase carry. But obviously, the more the lanes are bowled on, this oil in here goes away, and that forces the players to move in the middle part of the lane. When that happens, the angle changes, and the carry goes south. But so far for Mike Devaney, it hasn't been the case. You and I were talking about oil patterns before we came on today, and it's the hidden factor. We're looking at some sports parallels. We don't really understand what the oil patterns mean because they fluctuate each week. You know, think about golf, how fast your greens are, how you read them, how, how thick uh, the rough is uh, hockey, choppy or smooth ice, football or soccer, artificial turf versus grass. All these things are factors in how you play a game and how much or how little you succeed. It's the same way here in bowling. The oil pattern, Rob, dictates everything out here. It dictates how high or how low the scores are. It dictates equality left and right. You can set the lanes up to where the righties will never beat the lefties, where the lefties will never beat the righties, where the hook guys have more of an advantage than the straight guys. It's all predicated on how you apply the oil to the lanes. This week, the Scorpion pattern is 42 feet in length. And keep in mind that this season, the PBA is using two different oils, and they alternate that on a weekly basis. Hook a lot. Oh, my His God. His 16th strike of the day, sixth this game, third in a row. He's bowling audaciously. 
that mean really good? I don't know. Somebody told me to use that word. I didn't know what it said. I just said, write it in a sentence, and I'll read it. <laughs> Rhino looking for a double. Down 31. Really needs this. Come Not on. what he was seeking. Check. Right now, just having a little bit of problems trying to carry on this right lane. He struck only once, and that was in the third frame on the right lane. He bowled collegiately at the University of Kansas, a member of the 2004 Intercollegiate Bowling Championship winning team. One of the many accomplishments of Rhino Page, and many of these marks have been tallied recently. He's 16th on the point list, and he's not an exempt player. I mean, that's that's pretty astounding, seeing how he doesn't get into the events unless he makes it through the TQR. And exempt is the key word for him. That is his main goal, to become an exempt player. Tough, especially when you are a lefty. Down 31. Train wreck. Well, and it didn't look good in practice, like I alluded to earlier. His ball reaction didn't look very good in practice. It doesn't look very good right now. And now he's just lost the pocket. Well, big test of his young pro career right now. Get lucky. And Devaney, the seventh seed, clearly in the driver's seat now, up 44 as he gets set for his eighth frame. Six of his seven frames have been strikes. Gave a little look away there when he tossed that. Is somebody made that. Somebody moved off to the right of the set and caught Mike Devaney, but luckily uh, he let go of it in the proper direction with the right stuff on it. And right now he is all over Rhino Page, up by 54 pins. Rhino Page is the best he can shoot 215. Mike Devaney can shoot 279. It's a route. There we go. Devaney has been bowling for a living since he was 18 years old. And Devaney will move on to take on the three seed Mike Wolf. I asked him what it was like bowling for a paycheck at that early age. He said, hey, it's, it's an easy way to make money. Beats working at Jack in the Box. <laughs> Rhino oh, drops yeah, yeah. 10. Now, oh, right. this one is done for the youngster, Page. Maybe I can at least get to 200. <laughs> so, Page sees his TV debut come to a close as Devaney has won it. And when we return, we'll see him take on the three seed, Mike Wolf, who's quietly putting together a career season. The Lumber Liquidators Championship is brought to you by Atonic, the official footwear of the PBA. Atonic, first one there. By Prescription Flomax. By Lumber Liquidators, hardwood flooring for less. And by the United States Bowling Congress, ensuring the integrity and protecting the future of the sport of bowling. Bowl with us. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Lumber Liquidators Championship. Our eight bowler format has been reduced to the final four. And we are essentially in our quarterfinal right now. Number three seed, Mike Wolf, taking on the seventh seed, Mike Devaney. Devaney looking for his third straight win today. Devaney won his last match over Rhino Page by 63 pins, 278-215. How much longer can he keep this going? 
got exactly one spare in two games. He has more open frames than he has spares. And a boatload of strikes to go with it. Here's Mike Wolf from New Albany, Indiana, just across the river from Louisville. Same town as Fuzzy Zeller came from. Wolf quietly having a career season. The cyborg just gets up there and kind of goes through the motions and does his business. Not a lot of emotion seen anytime Mike Wolf is on the approach or on the lanes. Maybe not on the outside, but you can bet a lot going on on the inside. Wolf making his third championship round appearance this season. A career high for him is. We take a gander at our Motel 6 matchup. Devaney and Wolf. Devaney with a much higher average and a 300 game this week as well. And joining us in the booth right now, Chris Barnes, who is the number eight seed who started off rock chalk solid <laughs> in your four man shootout. There's a strike for Wolf and. Barnes finishing third in that four-man shootout with a 248. I know you'd rather be out there, but I, I realize this is your second best option, and we're happy to have you here. Tell us how, how the lanes are kind of holding up right now. Well, actually, not too bad. Uh, like Rainey said, we're on the 42-foot uh, scorpion pattern. Guys were pretty good in practice. There's a lot of practice with a lot of guys. They stayed to the right. They broke them down. They, they're playing much deeper than during the week, but there's a lot more hook to the right because of all the play out there. Devaney opens with the double. Well, what did you see from Mike Devaney in that four-person square down earlier in the day? Well, with about less than five minutes to go in practice, he jumped about two arrows left. He was real good about staying to the right of 10, like everybody else was breaking the lane down. He got a dull ball, went into about 15, and he basically had about three or four boards at the arrows that would all feed in the pocket. Uh, once he got out of the way, the first couple frames, he was he was tough to beat. He's tough to beat on the dance floor, too. Yeah, he's got some moves that I, I haven't seen in quite some time. I've got to go back to Danny Terrio on Dance Fever, or was that Solid Gold? What was it? You know Danny Terrio, don't you? I know, I know, I know. This has been the trouble all week. Because there's 42 feet, it's hard to create entry angle down lane. The front breaks down, and because it hooks so much sooner, you don't get a little trip four. Most of the time, you cut through the heart. That carries the big deal. The guys are a lot deeper right now than they were during the week. It'll be interesting to see who can make the right moves to knock the 10 out. Well, and that's not going to change when Wes Malott gets on the floor because he's a big hook power guy like these two. And uh, he's, I mean, he did say that, you know, one of his options was moving further right and getting real firm, but. Do you really see that happening today? No, I was further right than everybody. And you could see at the end of the match, the front was starting to break down. And you, you open yourself up to some big misses in the wrong spots. Oh, my God. Wolf with two in a row. Blew that rack up. Chris, why so much success this season from Mike Wolf? You know him as well as anyone. You used to room with him out here. What's going on? I think a lot of it has to do with confidence. I mean, he's been throwing it really good, starting with uh, two seasons ago when he broke through and won twice. Last year, he had he really had some bad luck. He had some great weeks where he had probably the best look or the second best look, but he bowled the guy that won the title twice, including uh, right here in Baltimore last year to Sean Rash. Right. Oof. Yeah. Face first on that one. Oh, that's so bad. Well, and this is a real bad time to, for this to happen because with that strike on the right lane, he takes the lead, and then he gives it right back to Mike Devaney. Watch this cut right through the heart. Leaves the Greek church minus the 10 pin. I think that's just a couple of things. Mike Devaney showed that that lane's starting to hook a little bit more. Uh, Wolf's ball hooks a little bit more down lane. He pays a little bit bigger price. Beautiful. Leaves two standing, Wolf down by four to Devaney. Chris, what happened in the 10th frame of uh, the match that you bowled with the other three players? You re-racked in the 10th frame and then went four pin. What happened? I was just buying a little bit of time. Uh, 
I was a little jacked up after I got the first one. I was pretty firm with it. Uh, the second one, I, I, it was a better shot online, but uh, it hooked in the front too, just like it did on the right lane. Oh boy, boy, you really see that sucker whipping in now. That was almost a Brooklyn strike. He's the 10 pin standing. Oil pattern's really starting to get torn apart from all the revs and all the big hooks. The big hook ball's going down the lane. Check it out, this ball gets a little bit to the right and just looks like somebody kicks it left. Picks up the spare, does Devaney. At one point, Devaney had rolled 16 strikes in a row over the course of two matches. I say that with a bit of a question mark, don't I? It was either 15 or 16. 13, then he goes 10 pin, and then through another 2, 4, 6, 7. Yeah. So started with 13, went up through 13 in a row. So he threw, threw a bunch. There's another one. Just able to clip that 10. Chris, who's got the advantage right now, and who do you see possibly coming out with a victory here to, tonight? Well, Mike's throwing, uh, Mike Devaney is throwing a ball that rolls a little bit sooner. So as he moves left, it should still read the middle. Uh, Wolf can get to it cleaner. I'd probably give the advantage to Devaney just because he's already so much further left, and, he, and he's ahead of Wolf in that regard. But when this guy has struck this year, there has been no stopping him. Leaves one more standing. Nice work on the pair, guys. And that's what he's talking about. We had 50 minutes of practice this week, way more than usual, about a half hour more. Um, the extra four guys, but just a lot of rev rate going down the lane. And the front chews up really fast on these long patterns because guys use duller balls to get it to hook. And a lot of practice time today as well in between these matches. Blasting thing. <laughs> Bounce right off it. Laney has been in a loose mood all day long, and for good reason. Coming up from that seven seed slot. And you guys are all pretty much saying anybody who's battling in that four man battle royal to start things off with is a very slim at best shot of winning today. I think Walter figured out one in 64. Yeah. Nice shot there by the young man at age 12 who bowled two 300 games. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. Chris Barnes, we want to thank you for joining us and hope to see you next week in Spartanburg. Wolf looking to go 5-1 and one on TV this season. The conclusion of his match with Devaney when we return. Welcome back to Baltimore, home of the Ravens, and this week's PBA Tour Stop Monday night on ESPN. It's Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints traveling to take on the Falcons in Atlanta, two NFC South rivals battling. Our coverage begins on ESPN, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Monday night football. Two teams having slightly disappointing seasons. Reggie Bush, talk is his season may be done due to a knee injury. We hope certainly that is not the case. We continue on here. Devaney with a four-pin lead and working off a strike here in the sixth. Oh, he was telling us this week, he, we asked him to describe how, how his week went. He says, throw him rockets. Throw him firm. Keep those lines pretty straight. Well, that was the idea early on, and, and through match play, you stayed as far right as you could, as long as you could. And in order for a high rev guy like Mike Devaney to stay out there, he's got to throw it really fast. Right now, he's actually playing just the opposite of that. He's way in around the fourth arrow at the at the uh, at the arrows, swinging it out to about the seventh board down lane. Most of the guys this week tried to stay right a second arrow. Mike Devaney into fourth arrow. His break points at the seventh board. Ball speed about 17 miles an hour. That's going to create a lot of curve. And that rainbow look down the lane. And when that happens, as we talked about before, pin carry starts to go south. Second time he's left the four standing. Takes care of it there in the seventh. 
lead is 13. Wolf, though, coming in, working off a strike, can make a significant cut into that lead here. He mentioned he had pulled two 300 games at the age of 12. The first one was part of a parent-child league on a Sunday afternoon. He celebrated with a wiffle ball game in the neighborhood. Not quite the champagne shower and drinks on the house. Yeah, but he's 12. Understood. Another strike there for Wolf. They still have that like alcohol-free apple champagne that you used to drink on New Year's Eve, right, when you were a kid. His second 300 game, coincidentally enough, happened on the day he had a photo shoot for Sports Illustrated plan. The photo shoot was in the afternoon, and he rolled 300 in the morning. It was part of that Faces in the Crowd in SI and um, also an article in Sports Illustrated for kids. Two 300 games at the age of 12. Unreal. When you make SI the age of 12, that's, that's big. You make SI period, that's huge. Yeah. Looking for three in a row. Lead now to Wolf by seven. Headpin going to the sidewall, doing what it's supposed to do. And with that shot there, Mike Wolf just put the asty in nasty. That's three in a row. Wolf now has the lead. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. You cleaned it up nicely. Here's Devaney. Nice. And Devaney responds with a strike of his own to match Wolf. Ebonite Digitrax is a digital analysis system that gives us accurate data of ball motion on the lane. Here are the numbers for Mike Devaney. The shootout match, he was around the 16th board just inside third arrow. You see where he's migrated to now. That's because the oil is coming off the lane. That's going to stay right. Stay right. Yeah. Got it! Getting good pin play gets the double. Lead back to Devaney. Mike Devaney knew that that was a huge shot. He needed to have this to keep any hopes alive in this match. With this strike here, it now enables him to strike out in the 10th for 235. Mike Wolf can strike out 9th and 10th for 242. Without that hit, Mike Devaney wouldn't have stood a chance in this match. Power home. Read that one well. Two more here in good count. Mike Wolf will go on to face Wes Malott. Malott, our number two seed. Patrick Allen, our one seed. Allen, the lone remaining lefty. So his side of the lanes essentially have been untouched for a while now. Wolf up seven. Looking for five in a row. Wow. A little high on that one, Randy? A little high on that one. And, and that's, you know, that, that was the theme this week was to try to go as straight as you can on this left lane. You want to give it a little bit of angle, kind of like what Mike Devaney's doing. Right here, Mike Wolf did not anticipate that ball going high. He really liked that shot off his hand. Devaney's going to be, or uh, excuse me, Mike Wolf is going to be in the 220s. The strike will give him 221. Mike Devaney will need the first strike in the 10th frame and good count. First strike, nine spare. Mike Devaney will win. Anything less, Mike Wolf moves on. Leads the 10. Devaney still needs the first hit in the 10th frame. So 220 for Wolf. Strike and eight, Devaney's a winner. He struck all but one shot on this right lane. He's been doing it all day long. The shootout match against Rhino Page. Games of 258, 278. And now he can strike out for 235. 
in his first match in the 10th. The man he went strike, strike, strike. In the second match, strike, strike, nine. Here, oh. strike. Does it again. He's getting the breaks. He's getting the good carry, but he's also making great shots. In the seventh seed, on the verge of moving on to our semifinals. Eight on this next ball. Is all he needs. And I'm going to go out on a limb. He's going to say get that it. he's going to get more than eight on this shot. This guy's dialed in. Are you kidding me? Seven. Oh. Just, he just needs two of them. He just needs two of them, and I'm never going out on a limb again. No. Stay on board. Now, remember, he whiffed in his first match on a spare pickup of one pin. This should be a no-brainer, though. I'm not saying anything. Savani has made it interesting and exciting all day long, on, and the seventh seed moves on again. A tight one, 221 to 220. We welcome you back to the first primetime telecast of the PBA season since 2001. Next week, we return to our normal time slot, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, where we'll be at the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. We'll take a bit of a hiatus and then return in the new year, January 6th, the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada, 1 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, the defending champ in that tournament, Patrick Allen, and Allen still waiting in the wings. He's our number one seed, getting set to take on the winner of this match. The number two seed, Wes Malott versus the hot kid, Mike Devaney, coming all the way up from the seventh seed today to play in the semifinals versus Malott. And Malott is the man they call the Beast. We'll tell you why, although it's going to be pretty obvious once you look at him. But first, it's the man they call Monkey Boy. Monkey Boy versus the Beast. On, on paper, advantage Beast. But Monkey Boy has been awesome today. And that is why. Dialed in. And that's a ball change. Remember, this guy's been tearing him up. Games of 258, 278, 221 last game. But the lanes are going through transition, unlike anything you folks at home experience, unless you bowl a PBA Experience League. And those belonging to the PBA Experience League can log on to bowl.com to get tips from our pros on how to play the different patterns. Here's Wes Malott. Six foot five, 250 pounds. He rattles the cage. Like few others. Let's take a look at our Motel 6 matchup. Malott making his second TV appearance. Best finish this year has been second. Devaney's third. So both of them looking for their first title in this season. Wes Malott, just a few weeks ago, bowling Michael Haugen Jr. for the title. Wes needed the first strike in the 10th frame. Left a vicious ringing 10. Wes says, you know what? They owe me one today. Ooh. Just missed swiping out the 10. Malott from Argyle, Texas, in between Fort Worth and Denton. Seen this a few times today. The head pin in front. Is that just bad luck? That's just ball entry angle into the pins. And depending on the center characteristics, sometimes you get that more than other places. Sometimes uh, a certain center of the back end, the side panels will be a little livelier. It just depends on where. A lot of it also has to do with the oil pattern. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh, turns into Ooh. an okay. Skims the 10 pin out of the way. So he starts strike spare. This is the fourth match today for Devaney. 
is started off two of them, rather make that three of them with strikes. In fact, three of them with strike strikes. Now you just saw Devaney do a little shoe swipe there and there's been some talk this week of the skid marks left behind by Wes Malott on his shoes. Big man comes in and leaves a little rubber mark there and it's, it's caught the shoes of some of the bowlers. Talk about that more in a second. Here's Devaney. Check out the moves that he's been making all throughout the day. Now that's around third arrow. The next match, he migrates into almost fourth arrow. This match, he's pretty much in the same kind of area, except he's gone to a, a bowling ball that's a little bit less aggressive, something that's going to push a little bit longer down the lane before it starts to come around the corner. Get lucky. Not lucky. Unlucky seven stands. <laughs> and, and getting back to... West Malott and the rubber that he leaves behind on his, it's, it's actually from the heel of his slide shoe. And Patrick Allen had an issue with it last night, or excuse me, two nights ago in position round. And now it seems like Mike Devaney's having the same problem. And it's not intentional, it's the material on his heel. And what happens is he's a big guy, he likes to plant and hit, and what happens is he gets into that slide and some approaches will actually burn a little bit of that rubber off and leave a little bit of a residue there. And if you happen to be sliding in the same place where Wes Malott is sliding, you're going to run into trouble. Patrick Allen ran into trouble with it on Friday, hit it, and actually fell over. Yeah, he ended up oh, out at the arrows. Yes! Malott drives those 10 to the turf. So Allen bit it essentially on his toss and he was essentially blaming it on this rubber residue left behind and there was a bit of a verbal confrontation between the two and Allen thought he heard something from Malott and Malott said alright let's, let's settle this right now not in like let's go out and back and drop some gloves here but just listen you know what, what did you say Allen said I didn't say anything and they've moved on but there, there was a heated moment Friday and those two may be facing each other again in a few minutes as Patrick Allen, the number one seed, waiting in the wings for the winner between Devaney and Malak. Yes, sir. Now, you called him the beast. I, last year I called him the big nasty, but I've got a new one for him, and we used it a couple of weeks ago. I like to call him the Kraken now because he's big, mean, and nasty. McCracken? No. The Kraken. Not the Big Urn McCracken. This isn't Kingpin. The Kraken. The Kraken. I'll write that down. I'm not sure. Did you not see the movie? I did, but uh, I don't. apparently I don't see movies as many times as you do. Get down 10. And speaking of Big Urn McCracken, right now, Mike Devaney has just, got, he's just gotten another Munson right there. It's three nine spares in a row if he converts here, and right now he's got the pin carry like a Munson. Did you ever see the movie Kingpin? I have. Well, there you go. Then you understand what I'm talking about. But it's been a while. Okay. Played by Woody Harrelson. Were you in that movie? I was. Don't blink, you'll miss me. <laughs> so Devaney down 12 to the two seed, Wes Malott. A lot. We'll watch Devaney here in the fifth. Devaney won his lone career title in the 2003 Geico Earl Anthony Classic. Two years ago, he was seventh. Last year, 11. Gets 10 right there. Well, you see the adjustment by him. He tries to go a little bit light now because all of his flush hits aren't carrying. Mike moves a little bit deeper and gets the swish hit. Wes Malott working on a double fifth frame. Leads by 12. 
number three on the world point rankings list. He was number one last season on that list. His average this year, 228.58, number two on the season. He was number two last season as well. Watch this for him. It's just God-given talent. Just beautiful arm swing, and he's got a release like no other. A very interesting technique. Looks down at the foul line when he lets go of it. He says he stands on the same board he's looking at. His, fing his swing just follows line. Because of that raw talent, he's not one to practice a whole lot. He says, I, I do that because the more I practice, the more bad habits I create, and I start going a little too fast. So he stays away from the lane so he can be successful like he is today. Who will survive to take on the number one seed, Patrick Allen, the conclusion of our semi when we return? Welcome back to the eighth event of the Denny's PBA Tour. It's the Lumber Liquidators Championship from the AMF Country Club Lanes in Baltimore, Maryland. Alongside Randy Peterson, I'm Rob Stone. Thanks for spending your Sunday evening with us. It has been a dramatic showcase of bowling. And that should continue next week as well in Spartanburg, South Carolina for the 2007 Spartanburg Classic. Who will win the $180,000 in prize money? You can see it live next Sunday, 1 Eastern on ESPN. We continue on now with our semifinal. This is Mike Devaney, down 32 in the sixth. Devaney gets a double, blew that one up big time. Normally when you throw them in that spot, they're all 10 are gonna go down and Mike Devaney just trying to get dialed in to create some carry because he doesn't want West Milan to get too far out in front. This is what we like to call in the biz, high flush. Oh, nice lingo. High flush, so today Devaney, 258, 278, 221. Hey. Hmm. What, what's the lingo for that? It's automatic with that ball. Is that a ring in 10? Ring in 10, and he's left a couple of those this game, and that is the reason why he's, why he's trailing thus far. Three 10 pins and a seven pin, and this looks just as good as uh, mm -hmm. anything that I've thrown in my career, and unfortunately, the angle creates that ringing 10. Well, Devaney was winless in his last four TV matches coming into today. He's looking for his fourth straight win on the day. Twice. Twice he has won by one pin today. Now steps up the beast. The Kraken. Shrek. Wes Malott. No shortage of nicknames or strikes for Malott. Looking for five in a row. Twice. Finding it. Come yeah. on. A lot of these on, guys have great nicknames. Wes Malott, Mike Devaney's got Monkey Boy. You've got a great nickname. Rob Stone, your nickname's Stoner. My old partner I used to work with, Dave Ryan, he was Rhino. I don't have a nickname. Do you, do you have a nickname for me, Rob? P-Man? Peterson? P-Man? I don't think we should use that one. <laughs> hey, you asked, you asked yes. Princess, is that better? Got awfully silent next to me. Oh, baby. We'll come up with something for you in Spartanburg. How about that? Maybe our, maybe our listeners, our viewers, can uh, drop us an email on your new nickname here as we look at what Malat has to deal with. Should be an easy pickup. Got real firm with that. Got it into the oil. The ball goes light, leaves it 2-8. But on this pattern, the way the lanes have broken down especially, should, should not be a problem converting the 2-8. All right. And just for the record, with all due respect, and remember when you say with all due respect, you can say anything after that. <laughs> I've never liked you. How about Cookie Monster? The Candy Man? 
you know, you moan about your weight, and I look at you, and you're double fisting with Snickers and, and cookies at the same time. Listen, I didn't say anything about my weight. You are the one that said something about my weight. Mike Devaney looking to get back in this match, trailing by 31, working on a spare eighth frame. There we go. All right, so here's the deal, Rob. Mike Devaney can strike out to shoot 237. If Wes Mallott finishes the match going strike, spare, strike, spare, he'll shoot 238. Check that, 237. Down 31. Curls in. Seven. Fuck Mocks him. Well, it's going to be a tall order now for Mike Devaney to win this match. He's going to have to have Wes Mallott just fall completely apart ninth and tenth because now the best Devaney can shoot is 217. And I had it right the first time. Strike, spare out. It's 238 for Wes Mallott. Right now, all he needs is a mark here in the ninth frame and good count. And he's moving on the bowl. Patrick Allen for the title. Well, we knew it would be difficult for somebody to come out of that four-person battle royal that opened up our broadcast. Got that lane. And you got a fresh. Got to get that lane. Come on. Fierce. Figure it out. Wes Mallott. Chucking with ease right now. He will again bowl for the title. Looking for his eighth strike of this game. Needs just five pins to win it. A lot. That's my word. Moves on. That's all he needed. So it'll be a 1v2 matchup in our championship match. Malat brings oh, up the spare. So up next, the number one seed, the lefty, Patrick Allen, takes to the hardwood. Wait till you hear what the verbose Allen has to say about his efforts as he gets set to take on Malat. Welcome back to Baltimore, and our thanks to Shona Chowdhury, the AMF District Manager, and Calvin Cohen, the AMF Country Club General Manager. Thank them for their hospitality all week. Next week, the hospitality tour takes us a little bit further south, Spartanburg, South Carolina, for the 2007 Spartanburg Classic. Live coverage on ESPN at 1 p.m. Eastern for an hour and a half. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Time now for our Geico Championship Recap, heavy on Mike Devaney. And lots of action, semifinal number one, or should we call it the round robin? Mike Devaney needs three in the tenth, shoots 258, and beats Chris Warren, Barnes, and Walter Ray. Match number two, Devaney takes on newcomer, or should I say up-and-comer, Rhino Page. He pounds Page into submission, 278, 215. And then in match number three, he takes on the big bad Wolf. Mike Wolf beats Mike Wolf by one. But then it's the big nasty's turn. He takes care of Mike Devaney in our last match, 236 to 207. So that sets up a 1v2 final. The lefty, Patrick Allen, the number one seed, set to warm up right now, taking on Wes Malott. Our coverage of the final begins when we return. Two contrasting styles as we look at how everybody worked their way to this point. A great run by Devaney, but it came to an end in the semifinals, courtesy of the big Texan, Wes Malott. Malott now taking on Patrick Allen. Rob, you know, Mike Devaney told us last night that PA has the best chance to win because he can go straight enough, and that straight shot gives you a better pin carry. That's what Mike Devaney said, but keep in mind, Wes Malott won his last title on this very same pattern. 
Allen very conversational with himself while he bowls. Very entertaining audio coming your way. Maybe not right now, but down the road. <laughs> Try not to oversell it, but yeah, don't overs yeah. we listened to him at the USBC Masters, and he was a riot. He strings four, five, six in a row, and he gets out to a big lead. Absolutely, you'll hear him hoop it up. We asked Malat how to describe his style yesterday. One word, awkward. Not like gangly 13-year-old getting acne, greasy hair awkward. Just unique and different and big guy chucking the rock. Thinking about it. Two new. Ball comes in just a little bit high. Leaves the four pin. Almost gets a nice break here. Ooh. I mean, that, that pin took about three cracks. And the four pin wouldn't drop. That'll take care of it. So Malat opens up with a spare. Motel 6 matchup, number one versus number two. These two took on each other earlier this week in round robin match play, and they tied 248, 248. Patrick Allen, former player of the year, taking on a guy that finished second in the voting for player of the year last season. Jack, and give me 10. Now Allen steps up, and yesterday he was saying, you know, numbers-wise, that, that number one seed really hasn't won a whole lot, but the top seeds have won five of the last six stepladder finals, including both times this season. with the double. Using two different bowling balls, playing the lanes to about the same zone on, on both, but the two different bowling balls gives him the same kind of look going down the lane. Let's get behind him there. Come on. We got full That's there. the difference between Rhino Page and Take what it. he did and yeah. the proven experience of Patrick Allen. Rhino, our only other southpaw in his debut, struggled just a bit, shooting 215. But he ran into a buzzsaw against Mike Devaney. Tomorrow night on ESPN, Monday Night Football, the Saints and the Falcons, two NFC Southern rivals, do battle. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. Kickoff around 8.30 on ESPN. Allen, very deliberate. Seven pin stopped them from an opening turkey. Puck. Flat seven for PA. Looks real good right until it hits the one two. Zero oh and one on television this season is Allen. This though is second championship appearance of the season. Again, he was in the USBC Masters in Milwaukee earlier this year. Remember, this guy made $350,000 over four oh five seasons, second highest all time. Pay the rent. He was the PBA Player of the Year that year as well. Owns nine career Denny's PBA Tour titles, including one major. Ah. You know, for... Be sure to head over to PBA.com to check out the tour's all-new online video service called Extra Frame. It's a subscription service, costs only $5.95 a month. It offers behind-the-scenes tour footage, interviews, coverage of featured matches from the tournament all week, live scoring with the new pin mapping technology, and much more. Make sure to check it out at PBA.com. Get down, 10! Yeah! 
Well, he said they owed him one. He just got one right there. They couldn't have come at a better time. Just a touch of, uh, just a pinch here on Kerry. Westmont, even though he's a big hook guy, he can still go straight when he wants to, and that's what he's doing. That's the game plan, is trying to keep the ball online. Just enough energy to take down that final pin. I'm a lot looking for a triple. Oh. Okay with that. Come on. Same shot he threw against Mike Devaney the last game. Gets the ball in a pinch too far to the left. It doesn't catch the dry boards down the lane to the right. And I think very fortunate not to leave the 10 pin with it, just leaving the 2-8. Cleans up that. So spare, strike, strike, spare for Malak. When we return the conclusion of the Lumber Liquidators Championship, who will win their first title of the season? Big Wes or the lefty Patrick Allen? We will be with you till the conclusion of this Lumber Liquidators Championship Final as we take a look at the Denny's 2007-2008 Chris Schenkel, PBA Player of the Year point race leaderboard. Five of today's eight bowlers in the top ten. Walter Ray Williams Jr. on top of everybody with 44. Walter Ray did not make it out of our first match today. One of these guys is going to elevate their point list. Alan or that man, Wes Malott. Careful, better, house. Allen up right now. Careful, better. Come on. A lot of self-talk. Yourself in the right mental frame to deliver your A shot. Got a chance, maybe. A it is. He's staring it down, though. He, he, he saw something, Randy. I think he's a little confused by wow. the lack of reaction on that shot. I think he's thinking that that ball should have hooked up a little bit harder and finished a little bit higher flush in the one-two pocket. PA, he said himself to us that, you know, I'm like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. As they're clearing the deadwood out of the uh, right lane. What do you make of that, Rob? The Forrest Gump reference? Yeah. Uh, he was saying it in response to my comment uh, about how vocal he is out there. And I said, you know, we, we really enjoyed listening to you in the Masters. And he says, you know, you never know what's, what comes out of my mouth because I don't know what's coming out of my mouth. It's been very subdued but focused so far. No Ravens game here, baby. You don't need to watch the Ravens game. Scratch subdued. <laughs> it has just been elevated. <laughs> I like it. I like it a whole lot. Allen now on top by 11. Back-to-back -back strikes. Here's Wes Malott. He's gone spare, strike, strike, spare in the fourth. There's some curving going on with that man, sir. Wes Malott's taking a giant step to the left, and he's going to open up the lanes. He's going to let it all out. Six frame halfway through. He's down by 11. Can close within one with a strike here. Told us how surprised he was at his success this week. Didn't really see this one coming unless he continues his learning curve on the tour. That's something you don't see a whole lot happen. happening. Too many guys on the right side today. A guy with that kind of power leaving this kind of week, Tim. Watch this. Never know. 
Six pin's gonna go to the sidewall and just DOA itself right in the right gutter. Hammers down the 10, picks up the spare. Russ Mallott did make the 7-10 split this week. Made it against Walter Ray Williams Jr. in match play. It's only happened three times in televised history. Allen, up 11 in the sixth. Looking for a three-bagger. One time. See, and I think that's what's confusing to Patrick. The last shot on that lane came in a little bit light, and this one really charges up high on the head pin. And he's got to finish the game on that lane. Takes care of that one with a victory today. He will have won at least one title in each of the last five seasons. Come on, man. Up 10 as we enter the seventh frame. Last one. He's taking his last re rack. You only get two per game. Patrick. And why do you take those re racks? Uh, a couple of reasons, I would assume. Two reasons. One, the pins are off spot. You don't like the configuration. Remember, it's machines that are putting those pins down. They're not always set on spot. They're not always perfect. And the second reason is you're just trying to buy yourself some extra time. In any event, you're still only allowed two per game. Shot two. Not often you see the nine oh, standing. Not bad. This one's just going to drift just a shade light. Remember, he's using two different bowling balls, more aggressive bowling ball in the right lane, something a little bit smoother on the left, and that one just never made it up to the pocket. PA told us both last night, there's not a lot of weeks out here where the lefties have a chance, and when you get it, you got to take advantage of it. Right now, Patrick Allen with a spare will maintain a nine pin lead. Curls on in, drops it. But a bit of an opening here for Malat. Right now, if West can double seventh and eighth frame, he'll take the lead. Lott's last TV appearance and his last title both came on this scorpion oil pattern that the competitors are dealing with today. Be the right ball. Be the right ball. Yeah, baby. Be the right one. Come on. The Kraken. Wes Malott using a different bowling ball on the right lane than he is on the left. Be the right bowling ball, he says. It is, at least for now. Strike, and he takes the lead. Get it right, Wes. There's a puddle there, you know it. Ah. Aaron shot, he didn't get it uh. far enough to the right. The ball's got to get further right to pick up the dry boards to get that ball back into the pocket. Wes knows that. Again, the good break or the good news is he only leaves the 2 8. When he said there was a puddle there, what did he mean? Puddle of oil this, this deep in the middle part of the lane. If he doesn't get it far enough to the right, there's not enough friction to get it back. Well, he had a chance to take the lead. 
And now the number one seed, Allen, has a chance to try and increase his lead. You let this guy hang around long enough, he's going to put you away. With a win today, Allen would earn his 10th title and become eligible for the PBA Hall of Fame once he retires. PA taking an intentional shot clock violation. He's not going to be rushed. Come on, man. It's not quite fast break bowling from Patrick Allen, but it is effective. Well, he shreds rack there, and we have more Deadwood on the right lane. The pins are actually coming out in front of the sweep. So PA cannot throw another shot until they clear that Deadwood. You see it right there. And he's in the driver's seat right now. The best West Malak can shoot if he strikes out is 228. Patrick Allen can shoot 247. Next week, we roll the lanes in South Carolina, the 2007 Spartanburg Classic live coverage on ESPN. We return to our normal time slot, 1 p.m. Eastern, an hour and a half at least worth of coverage on ESPN next Sunday, and then they'll take an extended holiday break and rejoin you in the new year in Reno. Allen up nine. Time? Yes! Yeah! Huge. Epic. Huge shot there for PA. That puts him in the 220s. One strike in the 10th frame, he'll be in the 230s. The most West Malad can shoot, 228. It's all about striking out ninth and 10th frame to put pressure on your opponent. Without a strike here, this match is all but over. Strike it is. Big step up from Big Wes. Well, let's see if he gets the ball far enough right on this left lane, and let's see what happens if he does. This left lane, the ball's got to get out to this right part of the lane in order for it to hook back. If it's too much down the center, the ball hits that puddle of oil, it'll never make it. Nice. Baby, give me a chance. He's got more than a chance. Yep, yeah, two more. That's all he's looking for right now to put the pressure back in the patch gallon camp. Let's see how far right this one gets. See, that hits the spot, makes its move back. I think he can make that ball a little bit further to the right. I think it'll come off even harder off that spot and face up, go flush in the 1-3 pocket. Again, he can max out at 228. Should he get two more strikes? Never got it there. Never got it to the spot. He was, you could see that it was left of the last shot. and had no chance of hooking. Patrick Allen needs any mark in the 10th frame. Again. Any mark for PA, he'll win his 10th title. Malat ends with a 217. Allen has been very deliberate today. He's had a long time to wait to get up here and finally bowl in the championship match. Needs only a mark during his first tour title of the season and 10th of his career. Ten pins down and ten tour it's titles. It's in hands now. It's in yours. Yeah. 
Why not? Why not? Great way, Hoss. Good morning. Thank you, too. It's a great chance. Definitely, I couldn't. There's a big puddle in there. I couldn't do nothing about it. Nothing I could do. One of the best on tour. I'm not about finishing last. All right. Yeah. And you're on that side. Allen just rolling Come out. Come on, brother! Yes! 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 And rolling out in style. One of the best on tour with either hand. There's been a lot that mean a lot, but this one means everything right here. Yes! 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 Tour title. What? 1-0 for Patrick Allen. Ebonite are national. Ebonite hammer. I've got here almost Shouts all the out to everybody. Allen wins his first of the season. Tenth of his career. We'll be back to wrap up our coverage from Baltimore after this.